Nu är det lätt att Yeah, we try to like fix the camera the same way as you have, but yeah, in this room it's impossible. <laughs> and we have troubles with making that happen, so I hope this is fine. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a question. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that you have a four. Okay, so we're going to start our. Uh, we're going to start our video link at one o'clock, right? Yes, in 15 minutes. In, in for 20 minutes, right? Yeah, in 20. Yeah, in 20. My club is faster than five minutes. Okay, so we are just going to have a short introduction from our side before we start the video link. Yes, okay. Are you going to call us at one o'clock? Uh, yes, I think we will, we are uh, going to call you. No, I think just like let it uh, live right now. Or... Yeah, and we can just turn up the sound when we... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, okay. Great, nice. Awesome. Nice. Um, is that is that bottle water? <laughs> is, is that is that water in plastic bottles? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, but, but, it, but it doesn't come from our side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is this, this, is, uh, the, the sort of a department for the protocol things within the university oh, yeah. to, to do it without us. Okay. Yeah, as long as you're prepared to defend the yeah, <laughs> Okay, we are going to put, put you on mute now because yeah, our sure. people will start coming. Okay. Yes, good. We're do the same. Just text us when you can. So you have coffee? Oh. Hi. Does not. Okay, Ja, det är det faktiskt nu fan. ja. Ja, Jag har en Men det är gott det kommer Vi bör inte den här gick alltså ska Kan man göra det? Det kan man Eller ja. Vi måste se på det här ska se. Nej, jag ska bara på. Vi måste bara vara lite försiktiga med akkurat den koblingen här. Men Men kan vi bara köra på på den här festen? Så kommer han där och så kommer du i söndag. Jag ska göra något extra för mig. Men jag har lånat en pen med så jag ska få det på. Du har en pen? Nej, Ibe har min pen. Ibe har min pen. Men hvis du trenger å se på båten din, ja, så kan vi plugge den på den pesen her, lage den der og lage den her, og så kan hun få se den på den pesen. Det blir vanskelig å se den på den pesen og snakke. For da må den enten være åpen på båten, eller være åpen på video 4. Ja, det er sånn tråk, Jasmin. Ja, ok. Evna, Jasmin tråk. Men hvordan er det at man ser ikke formaget sitt, man ser den der da? Man kan se det her. Vi kommer til å åpne det her, sånn at her kan ikke bli noe ansvar. Nei da, men det er helt perfekt. Jeg må ha det. 
Ja, det vi kan göra är er att uh, Parkinson vi står här. Um, så vi kan ta ta över slideshow. Ja. Vi kan start. Så Och så är det så att alla ska hålla för att du står cirka Och det är den, inte det jag tänker. Så du snakkar oss så och det är det måste. Och så vill jag bli avslappnad. Ja, för det är det. Så vi kan med parkointen komma upp här så att vi kan se din punkter så som du ser. Ja. Och så vill jag att du vill att vi ser att du är i varje man. Ja, men så det vi bara ser oss. Ja, ja, ja. Så vi bara att kanske han skickar dit till kameran. Och så är det ja, på engelska från det. Ja, då det har det rätt. Ja, nej, jag är lite som avhängig av att jag känner mig helt fri här. Men bara jag kan och pröva. Jag ska visa dig. Ehm Det är så sen bara att du kan stå här. Ja. Och så är vi som är på det här, vi sitter här. Och så vi har kvar min vän där. Det vi egentligen borde ha en som kan klicka. Ja, det är snabbt att man gör själv alltså. Men det är ju bara på. Ja. Och ja. så står så så länge man står i sitt här för det här kameran är det som är på min mark. Och den är inte den där. Oh, ja. Ja. Så enkelt ska det vara. <laughs> men du ska bara tänka på att prata med oss. Ja. Vi följer med men du vill inte se den. Här på inte den komma här på skärmen. Mm. Det är egentligen det mest ett föredrag för oss, liksom. Och så vill det bli avsnitt till ljuset. Hade du lyst på den du hade den till och med fram och tillbaka? Ja. Vet du hva? Nå får jeg bare sende. Hei, tusen. Ja, det må komme hit. Jasmin, har du noe? Ja, alle. Perfekt. Hei, ja. Så er det. Jeg får samme skyttene av den. Har du har du tatt det på maskinen eller? Ja. Kaffe. Hvad er det du har lyst på? Vand. Ja, vi går på det. Men fortæl mig lidt om oplevelsen da. Ja. Nu har vi. Kan jeg få? Ja, okay. Men Ibe så går Ibe den også. Vi kommer for den til mig. Ja, okay. Jeg skal sende den til dig. Vi har aldrig haft en webinar før, så dette blir veldig spennende å se hva det er. Er det Skype for Business? Google Hangouts. Ja. Mm. Og det fungerer ganske bra. Sånn ser programmet ut som det er nå. Og alle er klare over at du må fokke av i det. Vi gjør det begynner å bare være det kort og si takk til alle her. Og så vill vi starta en Skype session med Rosa med Sasso som är universitet i Arkangels. Ja. Då vill Max vara inleder och konferensier på russisk sida och på vår sida också. Ja. så vill då eh ja, vicerektorn på det universitetet hålla ett sånt avtal och bara. Ja. Och så vill vi Ja, så har vi en liten dag. Ja, och så snackar vi kanske lite om vad vi driver med och hur vi ska se och inte egentligen mer än det. Och så vill jag då gå vidare på programmet. Och hur ska det se ut då? Det är det. Så det är ett sånt ska det vara ett men egentligen mest för att jag har varit på universitetet i Norge nu i påsken och snackat med dessa engagerade studenter och dessa grejer att ha på något akkurat det samma engagemang som det vi har. Ja. Vi jobbar både på universitetet och håller för en kildesortering egentligen. Ja. Vi jobbar i byn och det är väl både remis och den waste management plan som vi har i Arkangels. Det är väl det. Ja. Så där är det är det är som om Tromsa flyttar sig till Ryssland och vi jobbar med akkurat det samma där därför är så kul och det är samarbete och få prata ut kanske helt idéer. Du kommer ja. ja. Det är så att vi ska ha engelsk och så blir det översatt eller för det blir ofta en sen när du ska ha det. Då har vi fått den här så då kommer den bara till like som är väldigt fint. Liksom här bara lägger den här nere. Ja. Och så har vi då videolinken i då fast det ska vara med stress. Ja, så kan vi se så där. Ja, för det kan vi se där. Ja. Ehm Nej för du kommer inte att ha upp i videolinken så vi brukar bara Du du får du får se den här. Ja. 
Du får se den här. Men det är er kanske lite för små. Nej. Nej. Så jag bara visar här nu. Så jag tror det är så han går runt på sån vi. Och då var det öppet att han också skulle kännas. Och jag förstår att jag fick mig Men det är er det men det är er det men det är 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 det Um, og så er det veldig kult, synes jeg, at uh, lokallaget her har er blitt så stort, og de gjør veldig mye. Ja, super bra. Uh, så er det så kult å komme på noen store møter i Oslo, og ja. skrive litt av noen av glade, fordi det er det ganske lokale over Norge sitt landet. Sånn, det er sånn. Ja, så det er noe spilt. Men du får ikke sett å ta for dine. Nei, men jeg har dem. Jeg har printet dem ut, så det kan klare meg fint med. Ja, men jeg har... Um, Ja. Men det är så så det är så så det Så det är er det som är 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 det Ja, men ser du det skjedde noe her? Ja. Så bare går ut og åpner den på nytt igjen, kanskje? Ja, vi gjør det. Bare kryss den ut, og så... Ja, nå... Jeg aner ikke. Sånn, da går det tilbake til det. Så sa hun på... Um, slideshow. Kan du bare kopiere min foredrag fra USB? Jeg kan også la den stå der inne, ja. med det som dere ønsker. Ja, ja. Du kan bare la den stå der. Ja. Eh, det er ikke noe kul. Altså, det her er helt... Men det er for at det er Mac, da, må det jo være. Fordi at... Uh, ja. I set up slideshow. Uh, presented by speaker. Ja, ja. Men nå er det... Okay. Kan du logga in? Hej hej. Kan du logga in på den här? Ja. Jag får just nu logga. Ja. 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 Nej, det är det du Jag har 
Sen kommer jag hissa. Det här månaden faktiskt bara hjälpa mig. Nu klarar jag inte i det hela. Jag får den här. Jag ska se här. Nej, men vi måste bara ta upp den visningen för att kunna bara ha papper den här, för det är bara för det här att man skiftar slag. Men det är inte så farligt att bara för att ni ser det, för folk vill bara se den där. Så hvis vi bara har fin i den här, så kan du bara göra det. Och då fick du ju pixel, jag vill att det är så. Ja, så. Ja. Ja. Så då har vi ordnet den, då måste vi ha denne. Eh, nei, ikke din. Da trenger jeg ikke ordlyd etter denne i to minutter. Det er den, vent litt, Evma, den som vil med Evma her. Den der, ja. Jeg må hilse. Gigi. Hvis du bare ligger den sånn... Legg den ned. Nei, perfekt. Og vet du hvordan du åpner den fullt? Vet du hvordan du åpner den fullt? Ja, ja, ja. Ja, ok. Så da ligger det her. Og det er gulvkjøringen vår. Her er det. Ok, da ligger begge to som har powerpoint her nede. Du har powerpoint, var det ikke det? Kan du også bare... Ja, kanskje du også skal bare legge den på. Nei, det vet ikke jeg. Men nå begynner vi om fire minutter. Hvor er resten av biologiklassen? Er det mulig å ta det med? Ja, det er det. Det er det det er det. Det er det. Ja. Ja. Skal min bare stå i det, eller må jeg ta den inn og så ut igjen? Nei, nei, det kommer bare ha noen forberedende, men bare åpne, for det er mye lettere å få oversikt over det. Jeg kan ikke, nei, nå skal jeg gjøre det. Nei, det kan ikke. Ja, den er også her. Hvor er du? Skal jeg komme til? Den? Ja. 
Der, da ligger den også der nede. Den er din. Kom til den. Ok. Da er vi gutt. Da kan du mate ut din... Da kan du ta den ut. Nei, den blir ikke. Nå, den er den ut. Kjøp, kjøp. Hallo! Så, hei! Kom igjen! Nå, vi har kontakt med Russland, vi har... Håper vi kan klare det. Vi er jo for de som har premiens veldig veldig hos deg, for den står der borte nå. Så bare vi tar den med oss når vi går. Ja, jeg trenger jo egentlig det. Vi trenger en lader. Helt slik fort. Men hvordan er det? Oi, sant. Nå vil jeg ikke at de skal stå og se på meg da. Men det er greit. Men jeg vet ikke hvorfor den ikke blir på. Nei, men da får vi bare være sånn. Sett på det. Hey. So we have all come. Are you ready to start? Да, 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 да. Здравствуйте. Сейчас нам коллеги сообщают, что буквально через минутку они будут готовы с нами начать разговор. Я хотел представить, меня зовут Максим Марченков, я заместитель представителя Пенсионного университета. И с этого объединения мы провести этот вебинар и ждемся, когда наши коллеги смогут с нами связаться с... В программе, в принципе, примерно указана последовательность. Я попросил всех примерно придерживаться тайминга, поскольку достаточно, достаточно малое количество времени кому-то придется. С той стороны, вы можете посмотреть, среди прошлых бумаг есть некая резолюция вебинара, и мы готовы услышать ваше предложение по ее поводу. Это не обязывающий какой-то документ, это скорее так, декларация о намерениях, что можно было бы делать совместно и университетом, и муниципальным образованием, и студенческим организациям. Вот. Ну, собственно, обсуждение этого документа Отлично. И скоро мы сейчас начнем. Получается, сначала я скажу несколько слов, представлю себя наша сторона, не представьте их с их стороны, и получается Алексей Николаевич Убитин. Да, 
Так, ну у них значит, все почти подошли, кроме Абгара. Главное, подойдет к чуть-чуть в процессе. Вот, и, Nanda, do you think we can start? Så er det noget med det. Jeg klarer at nogen må være lidt tidlig, men hvis man vil, kan gerne blive i slutten og diskutere og være med på hele debatten. Så da kan vi egentlig bare begynne. Det vil være en konferanse her fra russisk side, som vil kjøre opp i gang der. Så skal jeg introdusere de som skal snakke fra vår side. Yes? Vi kan gjøre det nå. Vi er ready. Fine. Så, god dag. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Matthias and I act as Deputy for the Student Association Echo University uh, at Northern Africa University in Arkhangia. Uh, JMA, representatives of Mayor's Office, uh, Rector, First Vice Rector, representatives of waste operating companies and public organizations, uh, professors, students and dear colleagues, uh, on behalf of Students Association Echo University and Association of Green Universities of Russia, let me welcome you and thank you for coming to our webinar and uh, you're willing to discuss such an important issue as waste management and how these systems uh, are operated in the cities of Tromsø and Akhangisk. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, such an important issue had gathered so many people from many sides. It means that uh, our discussion will have various opinions. And let me first introduce the speakers from the Russian side, who are Alexey Korshinov, uh, first vice rector of Northern Arctic Federal University. Daniel Shapashnikov, Deputy Head of Municipality of Akankilsk for Economic and Development for Economic Development and Finances. Valentina Leontieva, who is Environmental Engineer at Akankilsk Waste Recycling Plant. Uh, Dmitry Nesterov, who is Russian Coordinator for Separate Collection of Waste from Greenpeace Russia. And Maria Vitasari, who is a Head of Student Association Echo University. And Anastasia Sarjanova, representative of uh, Norwegian Baron Secretariat in Akangelsk. So, uh, thanks for coming, all of you. And now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Amanda Gunther. So, please. You are mute, unfortunately. You are mute. Unmute, please. Uh, no. Oops. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, sorry, we'll try again. Um, we have our web camera placed a little bit different than yours, but you, you'll see all the speakers when they come up to hold their presentations. Um, we have our uh, principal uh, of U UIT, University here, uh, Anna Husbeck, she's present. Um, then we have, uh, we're very happy to have our mayor, Christine Ramos, also come to join us. Then we have uh, Jasmine Narang, prof uh, professor of uh, the department, department of Arctic Biology here. And we have Atle uh, from Remix, he will also talk. And um, also Sara Raibudal from Samship Lab. Uh, so you'll see them when they come up to hold their presentation. All right, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So let us uh, first start with the introduction from Alexey Korshnov, who is the first vice rector of Northern Arctic Federal University. So, please. Okay, uh, dear colleagues, dear participants, I am very happy to greet you on behalf of Lomonosov Northern Arctic Federal University. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to meet you all and to contribute to a discussion of the contemporary issues related to waste management systems. 
It's a special honor to welcome the representatives of the administration of the twin cities of Arkhangelsk and Tromsø. Our est estimated colleagues and longtime friends from the Arctic University of Norway, as well as the members of business community, experts and students, of course. The year 2018 marks the 25th anniversary of cooperation between NARFU and the University of Tromsø. Throughout our long cooperation history, we have been able to accumulate considerable experience of successful collaboration in a wide variety of formats, such as academic mobility, joint research, international projects, and joint events. Within our partnership, environmental issues have always remained in focus. The problems of ecology have not in the least lost the relevance. It's indeed a big challenge we all are facing regardless of borders and differences. The problems are especially important for our young people and today they are willing to share their views of the particular aspects of multilateral issue, the problem of efficient waste management. In this context, we are very pleased to stress that our students were the driving force behind the webinar. Their partner universities are proud to be home to students associations working in the field of ecology, such as Eco University at NARFU and SPIRE at Arctic University of Norway. Environmental problems strongly resonate with our young people, and joint events such as this one uh, will spark their enthusiasm and willingness to contribute to the preservation of our common natural heritage. We wish you an interesting and fruitful discussion and new projects for the benefit of our communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexei. And now I think we can uh, switch to the rector of uh, Arctic University of Norway, University of Tromsø, Anna Husebeck, who is present. Yep. Hi. I want to address you. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. I'm impressed that uh, the students uh, take the initiative to such an event and that they can use uh, modern technology so that we don't have to fly all the way from Tromsø to uh, Arkhangers every time we want to see each other. Um, uh, it is also uh, very nice to have enthusiastic uh, students and they remind us of our responsibility for the whole world. We have just made justification to our strategy. And in this just justification, we just added uh, that our priority in this university is based on this uh, sustainable development goals from UN, the 17 goals. And uh, we want to look at each of these goals and measure whether we apply to the goals and what we can do to do that in a better manner. When it comes to the university here, of course, we want to be, uh, we do the waste management in a very good way. We want to apply to other goals that may, means uh, an environmental perspective. And uh, since, since we live in the far north, we have a particular responsibility because a lot of waste, a lot of pollution coming from other parts of the world end up where we live. And we want to, to give the, the, the globe, the world, to the future generation in a, the best possible way. What have we done at the university? I mean, when it comes to waste management, the students have reminded us that we still have a way to go. And uh, that has made the, the leadership and management of the university to look at waste management again. Of course, there are two levels of waste management. A lot of goods come into the university and the waste is taken well care of. The, the, the waste that is produced by each individual in the areas of the uh, university is not well enough taken care of at the moment. But we have a plan and uh, I want to see that this plan is implemented within the end of this year. But there are, of course, other things too. Uh, living in the far north, I think you and we re uh, experience that we have to fly a lot, we use a lot of flights to see each other, to reach the, the central government of Russia and Norway, 
And uh, if I look at my life, it is not a very environmental friendly life that I live, I have to admit that. So the use of meetings like this helps and will help in the future. And we have also to encourage our government to use this sort of electronic meetings when they now invite us for an hour's meeting in Oslo. This is waste of time and it is waste of CO2. Also, as a vector, I will encourage uh, projects that are related to environment and environment the friendly uh, future. Uh, I think that will be illustrated later on in this webinar. And for the students, I think that when they stay at the university, they will, as part of their upbringing, uh, also be exposed for uh, uh, thoughts and uh, plans that makes them uh, bring uh, sustainability and, uh, and, and an approach to environment that they will have all their life from the, 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 the part of the life that they're studying from them. We are not there yet, uh, but uh, as part of a plan, uh, we would like to see all new students in the beginning of next semester and expose them for uh, the thoughts uh, uh, in uh, the UN sustainability goals uh, and uh, inspire them to think uh, sustainability and uh, environment friendly solutions in the rest of their lives. So hopefully we can do something together and I'm sure we can. So uh, I end up by this and uh, hope that this discussion will be a, the beginning of a uh, common plan for uh, a, a better uh, solution for waste management, but all other approaches to the uh, sustainability goals. Thank you. Good to see you back since last time we met was the Tactic Frontier Students Forum Trumpso in January. Uh, so now I'd like to give the floor to Daniel Shapashnikov, who is uh, Deputy Head of Municipality of Arkhangel uh, for Economic Development and Finances. So please, with your welcoming remarks. Good afternoon. My English is not so well, so I will speak in Russian. Уважаемые <laughs> коллеги. Я рад приветствовать вас на семинаре, посвященном теме управления отходами. Обеспечение экологической безопасности является одним из приоритетов для органов власти в нашей стране. Поэтому администрация города, безусловно, заинтересована в проведении таких мероприятий, которые дают возможность обсудить текущие экологические проблемы, обменяться успешными практиками управления отходами, установить партнерские связи между представителями органов власти, мусороперерабатывающими предприятиями и университетами в сфере управления отходами. To exchange best best practices, um, establish contacts and partnerships between uh, businesses, uh, universities, and authorities in the sphere of environmental management and um, waste management. Архангельск активно сотрудничает в этом направлении со всеми партнерами в нашем uh, Баренц Европейском регионе или в Арктическом регионе. Архангельск uh, very actively cooperates with our partners within Баренц Европейский регион. В частности, нам интересен опыт таких крупных арктических городов, как Оулу и Трамсё, в сферах водоочистки и утилизации бытовых отходов. Так, совместно с финскими партнерами из Оулу, нами уже был реализован пилотный проект по раздельному сбору отходов. Together with our Finnish partners, we have already implemented a project, a pilot project dedicated to separate waste collection. Теперь этот проект распространяется у нас на весь город. And now uh, this project has been expanded to the whole of our city. 
Хочется поблагодарить руководство нашего Северного Арктического Федерального Университета и Арктического Университета Норвегии за организацию данного семинара. Ведь сотрудничество между Арктическими Университетами как раз и послужило фундаментом для установления побратимских связей между городами Трамсё и Архангельск. 2011 году. Наш Северный Арктический Федеральный Университет один из самых надежных партнеров для администрации города. И как раз при участии коллег нами была разработана стратегия социально-экономического развития города Архангельска до 2030 года. В стратегии определены наиболее острые проблемы по обеспечению экологической безопасности в городе, одной из которых является значительный объем образующихся и накопленных твердых бытовых отходов производства и потребления на территории города. Размещение отходов выводит из оборота значительной площади земель, а также загрязняет их. Поэтому сегодня в городе мы активно работаем над, проблем, над решением проблемы обращения с отходами производства и потребления, которое должно базироваться на уменьшении количества отходов, внедрении малоотходных технологий, создании индустриальной базы переработки отходов, сокращении полигонного захоронения, а также вторичного использования переработанных отходов. В частности, нашей стратегии сегодня определены такие мероприятия. Это ликвидация несанкционированных свалок на территории города. Рекультивация земельных участков из-под отходов. И создание развития производства по комплексной переработке твердых бытовых отходов. And development of uh, different uh, technologies and plans for recycling of uh, solid waste. При этом мы ставим себе амбициозную задачу уже к 2030 году достичь 98 процентов переработки всех uh, отходов. And our ambitious goal is, uh, which we plan to achieve by 2030, is to be able to recycle 98 percent of the waste. Ну и э, если говорить еще о цифрах, то вот за последние годы мы ликвидировали более 30 свалок на территории города. Сегодня у нас создается эффективная система учета и контроля от поступающих на свалку твердых бытовых отходов. Приобретено современное оборудование, внедряется новая система контроля. По сути, сегодня мы создаем умную экономику города, и это является одной из наших стратегических целей. Поэтому, конечно, нам интересен опыт других городов, которые в том числе находятся в арктической зоне. That's why we are very interested in the experience of other cities located uh, in the Arctic zone. Поэтому, дорогие друзья, я думаю, что сегодня вот у нас состоится конструктивный диалог. Uh, 
So, dear friends, I hope for a fruitful discussion today. И мы обменяемся лучшими практиками управления. And we will be able to exchange the best practices of waste management. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Daniel. And I think we're now switching and giving the floor to the mayor of Tromsø, Kristin Roymo. Yes, we just need to find presentation. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> good afternoon. Hi. Good. Do you see me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now it's easier. So, dearest friends of the globe, friends of, of Tromsø and Arkhangelsk and the sister city cooperation that is actually established between the cities, and the dearest deputy head of uh, the municipality. Uh, please also give, whenever you have the chance, my very warmest best to Mayor Igor Godic. It was a pleasure for me to host him as he was visiting Tromsø January this year. So, I am very glad that there is an initiative like this, organizing a platform for exchange of successful waste management practices between all the parties that need to cooperate in order to do so. Because the so-called, and I, in this sense, actually the so-called modern world is actually not sustainable, and this is the fact. So we need to do something. The way that we, the people, of the world. That means not only those people living in Norway or Russia or the other places around, for instance, the 10 biggest rivers that is producing the most of the plastic waste that is now actually a part of our global oceans but actually every citizen of the world, we need to change. And the only thing, the only way to do so is to cooperate and to cooperate in new ways for the future than we have done in the past. And when we know that within the next 30 years, if we don't change, there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish. Then we know we have a big challenge. And we know that we, people above the 40s, people below the 40s, people who are so small, they are not even capable of speaking yet. We need to do the job. This is what I believe. There is only one way to do so, and that is to work together with the best practices of every time, of every day best practices. Tromsø has taken on the new initiative of being a plastic-free city. How will we be able to be a plastic-free city? My brain, since I am taking this huge challenge, my brain is aching every day because I am a part of a system. I go to the store, I buy the groceries that I need in order to survive every day because I need to eat. And it's not possible for me to do so without being a part of a production line using garbage. So we need to reduce, we need to recycle, and we need to use again, to reuse. 
So the society and the principles that we are basing the lives of 2018 have to change. And I know because my heart is growing when initiatives like this is taking place. I know that I am not alone. The students of the University of Tromsø is not alone. The peoples of our Congress are not alone. The peoples of the world have the possibilities. Of course, also by using technology like this. The last time I visited our Congress, I used the footprints of the world in order to visit you. And we need to keep on visiting. But being able to meet like this online to discuss the biggest problem of the world of today is just marvelous. So I am thanking you for this. And as the mayor of Tromsø, being the sister city of our Congress, I will do every think that I can in order to strengthening these initiatives and other initiatives. Thank you for your attention and good luck on the work that you are going into now. Thank you for a wonderful and inspiring speech, Christine. And I think we are switching to the next speaker who has just been Nargan, right? Yes, she will be here. So we get to listen to her. And then we will find her presentation. The other you want. Oh, there we And just do this. Um, would you like a copy of the screen or do you want to see uh, the speaker? I, I think we would like to see the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint. <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> Just well, the screen behind you is a little blurry. Yeah. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Yes. Yes. All right. And then we. Yeah, I think you can have this now. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me today. I'm Yasmin Nagan. Um, I'm associate professor at the Faculty of Biology, Bio Biosciences, Fusion and Economics um, at the University of Tromsø, and I am actually a researcher in ecotoxicology, which is uh, maybe in a more simple way uh, pollution biology, what we call it. Um, and today I want just to give you a very, very short uh, talk about my experience working as a, as a scientist in a big project, which is called the Environmental Waste Management Project. Um, this is a project which um, was divided into two parts. If I come a little bit back to first, it was a very big project from 2010 to 2018, so almost 10 years, um, <clears throat> which was focusing only on waste management. And it was funded by the Research Council of Norway and by Ininorga, which is an oil company. So this project was uh, divided into two phases. The first phase, uh, from 2010 to 2014, was uh, um, really concentrated on research and research around waste management. We had uh, a lot of different work packages. I was a postdoc at that time. I was not a researcher yet. Uh, working as a, uh, as a researcher on the work package one, which was dealing with the impact of uh, petroleum, the petroleum industry in Arctic marine environments. And so maybe you can consider the waste as pollution of garbage, but I see it in a, in a broader sense, actually. Waste is also pollutants, and the pollutants which come from, actually, the waste as well. So um, um, in this project, we had a uh, very big diversity of, of different pollutant types that we were looking at, uh, both the impacts, but also the, uh, the technologies to actually manage this waste in a better way. So the second work package, for example, was also uh, related to our petroleum industry and, and the effect of tree cuttings and the deposition in, on the seafloor. We had um, a work package on mobile electrochemical remediation, which is um, uh, technologies, how to remove 
actually certain type of metals from the, the sediment floor in the seas. There was a work package on uh, capping technology. It's a very broad uh, subject. We had uh, also a work package on the methodological guidelines for development of best practices for participatory industrial waste management in our case of activities. Um, I'm not finished. We have a, a work package six on weathering rates of pollutants and use of drill threads, uh, drilling threads as molecular indicators in the Arctic. Uh, a seventh work package on the separation and treatment of pollution, and an eighth one on the framework for risk based analysis. So it was very, this first phase was really broad with many different pollutants and, and, and different approaches looking at, at the effects of pollutants and also trying to study new technologies and develop new technologies for uh, dealing with this, this waste. I have been only uh, working on the first work package on the impacts of, of the oil, so I cannot say so much on all the results from this, this different work package, but I have been more involved in the second phase of EVMA. And the second phase, uh, which is an as important, maybe even better uh, part of this, uh, this project, uh, which lasted until uh, last, last year in December 2017, was the, was the end of this project, we had three main uh, uh, pillars. The research was continued, then we had education, which was something that was pretty new. We wanted to create new courses, a new study program, and um, uh, basically recruit more students to study uh, waste management and pollutants. And pollutants. And the third pillar was networking and basically having a communication with the industry and the researchers to find better solutions. So if I, I just uh, resume very, uh, very briefly, the research was reduced to uh, much few uh, aspects. We, we focused on operational and industrial waste, uh, mainly from the mining industry and from the oil industry. So that was the research was dealing with, with the effects of, uh, of these two uh, types of waste. And on education, this is where I have been uh, most involved and where my postdoc became a permanent uh, position. So I, I, I became a researcher from this EVMA project. It was a, a very nice thing for me. We developed an educational uh, part work package where we basically started a new study program and new courses within pollution biology. Um, and finally, I talked about the networking. We had something that was called EVMA Dialogues where we created workshops to have the industry and the researchers meeting together and discussing challenges of today around the oil industry, around the mining industry, and trying to find solutions and, and what kind of, of uh, topics uh, of research need to be further developed um, to find answers to our problems. So just very briefly, I will talk about the education part and what we have been doing in the last four or five years at uh, the University of Tromsø, and especially in my faculty. Uh, <clears throat> just going to summary some, some main learning goals that uh, we, we really try to, uh, to uh, fulfill every, every single year when we recruit students. It's to combine theoretical knowledge and practical skills. The practical skills in the field of biology and pollution biology is really important. If you want to have students that are uh, basically able to find jobs and be helpful in the, in the, in, on the job market, they need to have practical skills. So the theory is it's really important, but they also need to have this practical aspects. And the second thing which um, we have as a, a main learning goals at, the, uh, at our faculty is to have a broad knowledge, not only about pollution, but also about ecology, the understanding of the environment and um, how the, the organisms are functioning, how they are uh, answering or, or reacting to the environment, how they interact with each other and how they are impacted by uh, pollutants and pollution in general. Pollution can also be seen as climate pollution, uh, ocean acidification. So it's a very broad topic. It can be increased to many different aspects. Within the pollution biology work that we have been doing on the uh, teaching, we had three. We have three learning goals. The first one is related to knowledge, giving a strong knowledge um, and broad theoretical competence to our students within pollution biology. We have the skill aspect, which I already mentioned, which is giving a good practical competence to answer the demands of the job market. And in the end, in the end giving a general competence to the students, the ability to adapt to new situation and not just to uh, uh, study one single one thing. Minute left. Yes? <laughs> you only have one minute left. Hmm? You can only talk for one minute. I'm finished. I'm almost finished. <laughs> so I'm just going to go through. This is, um, this is all the, the different 
uh, sub goals that we have, but I, I don't need to go through all of them. I wanted to talk very shortly about three courses that we have. We have one that is with ecotoxicology, where we have at the bachelor level uh, this uh, this theoretical background and this practical work that is uh, put into uh, into uh, uh, action. We have an internship uh, course, which is uh, which basically takes the students out of academia and into the into the, um, uh, the, the uh, companies outside the university to learn really how uh, how uh, the world is functioning outside research and outside the courses and we have a, a course at the University of Svalbard which is about petroleum and that is multidisciplinary with many different aspects geology remote sensing biology chemistry everything that you need to know uh, around oil pollution and this is a course where we have many Russian students coming and it would be very nice uh, if we had more students from Russia coming to this course, because it's intensive, it's five weeks, so it's very easy uh, to actually take the time and travel to Svalbard to take these courses. So I can just stop here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can we now please see you instead of the screen? Uh, we see us anyway. Uh, I think now we're giving the floor to uh, Valentina Leontieva. Who is a representative who is an en ecological engineer at Akengelsk waste recycling plant? So I'm going to switch the camera to her. Okay. So, what I I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think we can start. Since November 2014, our waste processing plant has been implementing a separate waste collection program, encompassing the collection of trash paper and cardboard, plastic, glass and aluminium. And therefore, part of the city waste undergoes preliminary sorting, which decreases the final volume of waste transported to the landfill improving the ecological situation in the city. Основными этапами развития раздельного сбора отходов стали внедрение и развитие раздельного сбора на территории Архангельска в 2014-2017 годах, затем внедрение раздельного сбора на территории Новодинска в 2017 году и модернизация контейнеровки раздельного сбора из двух в один. So the key stages of separate waste collection are the following. Uh, the first one, introduction and development of separate waste collection in Arhangelsk. Uh, the second one, introduction and development of separate waste collection in Novodvinsk. And the third one is a modernization of separate waste containers uh, based on the principle of two-in-one convergence. And today, the Hardest Waste Processing Plant uh, has mounted 183 blue and yellow separate waste collection containers in Hardest and 66 in Novodvinsk. In the framework of the program, the plant has been carrying out a complex of activities, including distribution of leaflets and improvement of container yards. It is their concreting, installation of fences and containers themselves. The whole amount of work is performed free of charge and at the expense of the plant itself. And the plant annually invests over 2 million rubles into the program's implementation. 
Все контейнеры для раздельного сбора отходов находятся в свободном доступе для населения, а также их местоположение нанесены на интернет-порталах RecycleMap и Tugis. All the containers are freely available to the public, and you can find out about their location on the web pages RecycleMap.ru and uh, Tugis. Количество раздельно собранных отходов в Архангельске за 2014 год с ноября 21 тонна, в 2015 году 141 тонна, в 2016 254 тонн в сырья и в 2017 году 660 тонн. The total amount of separately collected waste in Архангельск in 2014 was 21 tons, in 2015 uh, 141, in 2016 uh, 254, and in 2017 670 tons. Снижение загруженности полигона города Архангельска и приобщение к программе города Новодвинск. So we deem our key uh, achievements uh, the following one. Once, uh, the first is the increase of in, in the amount of removed and disposed waste. The second, uh, the reduction of the workload of the city landfill and introduction of the program in Новодвинск. Архангельский мусороперерабатывающий комбинат в дальнейшем Планирует установку контейнеров с раздельным сбором на остальных территориях, например, остров Соловки. The Hungarian Waste Processing Plant also plans on mounting the separate waste collection containers on the island territories, such as the Soloviecki Archipelago. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for your presentation, uh, Valentina. And I think uh, the next speaker with the PowerPoint, hopefully. Uh, is uh, Alte Vasmut Robertson, who is a business developer for uh, waste operating company Remix in Trumse. Amanda, we can't hear you yet. Now you can hear us, right? Yes. Stas Vukje, do begin. Привет, как дела? Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, as some of you may know, I was in Arkhangelsk in December last year and, and had a speech, which I have a PowerPoint. I don't want to run through it today. It's about a 10-minute PowerPoint. It takes one hour to perform. <laughs> so we were two people from Remix invited by the Norwegian <clears throat> Directorate of Environment. And uh, there was a, a good conference in Arkhangelsk uh, where we uh, spent two days and said a lot of the things that I wanted to share with you today. I agree with the, with the girls from Spira that the, we will send you the presentation afterwards. The mayor, however, in our Congress has this presentation. We sent them to him prior to his visit to see us after he was at the town hall. And you should also know that Kristen Raimo is my boss. So I, mean, I agree with everything that she said prior to this presentation. <laughs> I would like to share with you what I would like to share with you, I will divide in three, in three items. First of all, a little bit about the background on which we all seem to agree. The UN Nations environmental issues have said that uh, the climate change and the pollution, especially marine pollution, but of course, as you live in, in Russia, you know a lot about earth pollution, not on sea, but on land. And I learned when I was in the Congress that you don't separate waste too much but you have 33 landfills. Hooray! Be, be, be aware of that. That's dangerous. Uh, the, my, my, my background is so severe that I, when I have this presentation, I, I usually uh, go to the extent, to the extreme, to cite Barack Obama. When Barack Obama was running for the, another, another period for the presidency of the United States, he was, as you know, running against Donald Trump. And, and Barack Obama said about Donald Trump and his campaign. And when I showed two pictures, we, we, you will get on the, on the PowerPoint presentation later, you will understand what I meant. When you see the, the picture of the climate change and the marine pollution, and Barack Obama said, and I borrow his words in this concept together with you, this is not entertainment. This is not a reality show. This is very, very severe. 
We have a researcher here at the university, Kevin Gabrielsen, who knows a lot more than most people about what happens to the plastic in the ocean. That's that's very, very full language. That's a scary movie. You don't like to see it. You, you're, you, you will be in very bad mood when you see those pictures and those movies and those comments. There's a global challenge, and Anna said something about there are more metals and minerals in products today than it's left in the earth. If we continue, if we, if we continue that uh, pattern of behavior, we need two globes, two Earths, by 2030. Do you know which year it is this year? Yes? It's not a long time. Second part of, the, of what I wanted to share with you is how we sort waste on the private sector here in Tromsø. Tromsø, as you know, is a very small town in a very small country called Norway. It's approximately 80,000 people in Tromsø. It cannot be compared to our Congress. You have much bigger challenges, but then I can speculate. I think you have less waste per capita than we have in Norway in general and in Tromsø too. But the, 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 the business in terms on the private sector is set up uh, with one bin. First of all, I would say it's 80,000 people here. But there is, it means that the company who runs the business on the private household waste management, they have approximately 38,000 clients. And any company who have 38,000 clients could be a rich company. But this company, owned by Christian Remo is not allowed to make profit. But there is, the sorting system is, each client sort the waste on their household basis in five different fractions. So the client do a lot of the job. The client himself does it in the first, in the first step. They, they sort the waste back home and they put it, and that is the point when it comes to economy, in one bin per household. And then our trucks, which I called, I used to refer to them as, as one armed bandit, because they are operated by one driver with a mechanical arm that picks up the bin and empties into the car, put it back in place. And the drivers today can take up to 1,000 bins per day, each driver. And this is what we showed Igor uh, Godic when he was in Chumse. So he knows this very well. I hope that he will be able to, to develop something in a Congress which is a bit, a bit like this. Uh, in addition to the fact that the company empties all the bins on a weekly basis, we also have, uh, every, everything is big in the US, you heard that phrase, so it's not all so big in Tromsø, but in, in, by Tromsø comparison, we have a retour or re, re, recycle station where the people that the, the, the garbage that they cannot, they are not able to put into the bin. Either it's a sofa or a bed or a lamp or an old PC. They, they won't get it into a plastic bag, which they sort in different, in four or five different colors. And those are when you get, get back into Remix, they are read by optical systems and sorted optically. It is, it's very effective. That was my opinion. And in addition to that, we also have places around Tumse, approximately it's 35, I think, where, where consumers can put glass and metals into a container, and then they will empty it every time it gets full. Uh, in addition to the larger quantities and the larger entities that consumers want to get rid of, together with hazardous waste, they have to go to the central station of Renix to get rid of that. So that's a very, very short description on how we try to do it on the household basis. Uh, one of the challenges which I, which I find quite similar to our comments in other Norway is that distances are huge. The big difference, I think, from my point of view, and I don't want to offend you, is that we have laws and regulations that regulate waste management business. In addition to that, we have fairly good roads in the whole of northern Norway. And that, I understand, is a challenge in Russia. And, in, and, and those two things separate us to a large extent. So I think it's important what I, what I learned in our Congress last year was that there's, 
a lot of hard work trying to to put forward and get the and get the new uh, laws and restrictions and formal regulations around waste management. Uh, at the end, I will have a few comments on processing and uh, money making. Despite the fact that, from my point of view, these services are paid at a fairly low cost, we are able to make a profit. It means that the wholesale waste, waste and the corporate waste that we gather in our area are, are sold to our sister company, Remix Production. And their, and their task is to optimize the value of that, that flow of goods. It means that we are trying to do something with it here in Tromsø, instead of just shipping it out. So we gather it here, and we try to gather from, all, from other companies around us in Northern Norway to increase the volume, and to increase the volume, we hope, by negotiations with, to get the price better. Finally, uh, from, from, the, uh, from the conference in our comments, I would do as the lady who led the conference said at the end. She touched her heart and she said, it's all fine with laws and regulations and technique and processes and methodology to help the world from, uh, from going under on, on an environmental issue and pollution issue. But it all, it's all a question about attitude. It all ends, it starts here in your heart. If you don't have that, that uh, idea of how you, each of you, can help the environment, it will be a waste of time. So with the close relationship that Remix has with the university here in Tumsa, with a sign agreement with Anna Husebeck, where we work and interact, it's fantastic to be invited here by Spira. We also work with another student organization called START. And then um, we spend quite some time at the university. First of all, that is where the, the, the competence is coming from. And secondly, we need that research and investigation to come up with better solutions. So that's all I wanted to say but for now. We will send you the presentation. You may see some of that. And maybe, if I'm lucky, you will uh, recall some of it. Thank you very much. Dasli Danya. Thank you very much, Patrick. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for sharing your presentation. Hopefully, uh, we'll spread it uh, through the participants of the webinar. And I think our next speaker, uh, with his expert opinion, is Dmitry Nesterov, who is a uh, Russian coordinator for separate waste collection for Greenpeace Russia. Hello, everybody. Uh, I switch off the PowerPoint presentation and start to talk a little bit. Now I'm a coordinator of uh, the federal project Ben the Back because uh, one regular will work mostly with, uh, with, the uh, with the sorting system, I mean, separate waste collection. Now more we work with the topic of um, preventation of waste generation. Okay, uh, I have 10 minutes, yes? Okay. Um uh, about project, I don't want to repeat the same information which talk uh, which told my colleagues from uh, Arkangli's uh, recycling plant. Uh, but some main traits that uh, the first project which uh, will start in in Arkangli's in 2005, 2005 year, uh, it works only one year and then it's closed. and it was a common project with uh, the administration of Olu city. And uh, 2014, we have a big uh, educational forum with with the employees uh, from Arkhangelsk Regional Waste, from local government, and we discuss how we can how we can start the common project, how we can start business uh, common project where is the business and and uh, local authorities, uh, local lo local activists uh, can promote this project. And mostly, you see the first photo it's uh, uh, after two weeks uh, when we finished uh, the forum in Akanglisk in three um, in the three in the three public places I mean mostly in a uh, way square I mean the place where as you can see the containers for waste uh, Arkhangelsk recycling plant uh, install uh, three containers but it's six containers because it's the beginning of this project the uh, they install uh, two containers one yellow and one blue 
if you see uh, blue for paper and um, yellow for plastic uh, glass and aluminium but uh, later because uh, people all the time and mass media asked why uh, why we divided uh, waste flow i mean in one container we put paper and and other recycled waste in other container why only one uh garbage track put all of this uh recycled waste it i think it, it's a good question because uh mostly this situation uh was happened in every regions in every cities and uh, the administration of the plant decided to install uh one container like this one because it's more easy and it's not necessarily a lot of a lot of place uh, a lot of space for this container um about role of uh, activists mostly uh uh, the former youth environmental NGO, NGO which called ETHOS. Now it's a public movement 42, it's called. And we start to make different activities which can we involve the attention of local population, local mass media, local government, regional government, and start to organize some of these events. Um, I work in Akanglisk in two, uh, close three years I work in uh, like a manager of this project uh, in uh, youth environmental uh, NGO ethos and we organize different events it may be like a free market uh, where people can um, can stay different clothes books and other stuff it's like a crossing when you can cross books uh, clothes and we organize a separate waste collection when people can 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 hand over the recycled waste uh, and uh, get a coupons which we can uh, use for take a, maybe took uh, took different books took uh, took clothes took other things maybe some kind of sculptures you see only pictures uh, uh, some events uh, in four years uh, maybe more in five years we uh, at us and uh, public movement 42 organized more than 100 one 100 activities different mostly it's uh, it's a cleaning of beaches cleaning of public places it's a um, recycle championship which called echo battle echo battle is very famous very famous project uh it was start starting from 2013 2012 2012 sorry 2012 and it's can it, it, this story uh, will continue and uh, the main idea that we are we opened some places uh, open places for people on weekends and people can uh, can hand over uh, paper plastic and maybe batteries one year ago now it's unreal because uh, low because it's necessary to get a license to collect the batteries and other uh, hazard hazardous waste uh, that's why why now we don't do it now we don't do it and uh, it's really very popular uh event we organize a different press tour for mass media for bloggers i think approximately seven press tours for uh, press tours for uh journalists for bloggers because it's very uh important to show that the process of sorting the process of recycling is very is very clear very transparency because, because russian people really never believe and always you need to show that is this the system is work and that's um this really want to uh decide the problem the waste problem uh, with municipal solid waste in russia because now it's really a huge uh, problem also different tech lessons uh, different uh, again clean up with the local government with the local activists and uh, some words about uh, about the map recycle map it's a project of greenpeace russia which will which was started in 2011 now more than 40 cities uh, uh was located on this map it's a national map and it's uh, it's a voluntary project and uh, every city is if they want to open uh, the map in there only necessary to collect the addresses of the separate waste collection and send it uh, and how is it located on the map and this all it's it's really very easy and the country is also um now on this on this map and also on to 
there is some uh, information materials which we prepare for for our uh, public activities and also uh, we made uh, the common information materials with the Arkhangelsk recycling plant uh, um, it looks a little bit different but the main idea and the information is uh, uh, was was the same yeah and also um, in the frame of echo battle we started one year ago we opened the project uh, in Novodvinsk yeah and two years ago we opened the project in uh, northern arctic federal university we have negotiations with the administration of narfu and suggest to install the containers for recycling close to the uh to the buildings of the university uh, of the last maybe public activity it's not uh, activity of ETA, it's not activity of uh, public movement 42 it's um, some small group of activists uh, decided to make uh, the biggest sculpture from the plastic bottles in, in in the world and they they sent the application form in a uh, guinness book of records and uh, they've they've made this uh, they made this sculpture and it's uh, and it's uh, consists more than um, more than 43000 of plastic bottles and uh, now this uh, the activists are waiting for response from guinness book of record uh, okay uh, it's also the experience of akangas region because it's really not very not very uh it's a region which always have a, some problems with the financial in the budget also haven't a lot of money which is they're ready to spend on the developing of separate waste collection that's why you know, we show this example how business and activists uh, work together and made a really good project in these cases we've got three we've got three regions it's orenburg saransk and Arkhangelsk and severodvinsk and show different forms of uh, how it's possible to develop and, uh, and promote the separate waste collection in, in Russian cities. And you can find this information in the website of Greenpeace Russia. And it's really interesting information about the volume of uh, recycled uh, re recycle waste. It's information about how this project was starting, etc. And if you want, you can find this in the, in the website or maybe uh, road to me through the um, organization I think can can get my contacts and uh, the last one I want to say about the rating and to say about Akangelsk uh, um, in a map of Russian other cities that's uh, at this year we uh, tried to we made a second version of the recycling rating uh, in cities uh, in cities and towns uh, with a population more than one uh, hundred thousands of people uh, we tried to call we sent the application form in administration of the city and tried to account how many uh container squares or places for containers have a containers has have a containers we, uh, for recycling and now a uh, and when we account all this information a congress took uh, 25 places and more than 30 uh, 30 percent of uh Arkhangel citizens have opportunity to use uh, to use containers for for recycling. Uh, if it be very detailed, uh, thirty two percent. Yeah, and uh, about the methodology of this rating in, in the calculation, we fixed containers were used. They collect at least one type of recycling. It doesn't matter what kind of what kind of type, and available to residents around the around the around the whole day uh yeah you can see it's on the uh, on it on the web on the last slide if you can read uh, in russian that's all if you have a questions please ask me yeah i am finished thanks a lot uh, and if you have uh, questions please ask me mm -hmm. thanks for your uh, presentation Dimitri. and i think we Thank now you. uh use the expert opinion of uh, sarah Ray yes that is true yeah. <laughs> Are you still sharing your screen? Screen? We see you. 
Yeah, but we see your screen. We can see you guys. Can you see us now? Can you see us? Yes? Okay. Very nice. Have you also not that screen? Okay. Okay. So, can I hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah, my name is Sara Rebogal. I'm uh, the head of um, the Arctic Student Welfare Organization. I'm uh, not here to talk about the plastic waste on campus, but I'm here to talk about what my organization do to minimize our carbon footprint and what we do to motivate the students to make good environmental choices. So, the Arctic uh, Welfare Organization uh, helps students on a daily basis with housing, food and drink, sports, childcare and counseling. Our mission is to facilitate a safe, secure and enjoyable environment for all the university's students. Um, this is so they can fully concentrate on their studies and their student life and not worry about where to live or how to get by. We rent out more than 3,000 flats to students at the university. Here you see uh, Dramsven Panorama, our newest, newest student house, um, who is constructed with environmental friendly solid timber. Building in wood instead of concrete is a good environmental choice. Uh, wood is a renewable so resource that is produced using energy from the sun. During the life of the tree, it also stores a large amount of CO2, which remains inside the material after it has been converted to hose. In addition, wood is easier to carry than concrete, which, is, which also reduces emission in the freight process. We are uh, currently planning uh, new student housing in our northernmost uh, campus on Svalbard. Uh, this student house will be located in the center of Longyearbyen. And in an environmental perspective, this building will be even better than the last one. On this building project, we have hired a project manager who is in charge of making all the right green choices. He will oversee that every part of the process is done as environmental as possible. Um, the goal is to build in a so-called passive house standard, which is the strictest standard of energy in buildings. We also have a renewable energy agreement where we only buy electricity from renewable sources. In our case, a hydroelectric power plant in Övre Forslam, which is said to be the most beautiful power plant in Norway. I don't know that <laughs> as a fact, but that's uh, what they say. Um, this power goes to uh, our student houses. So student, uh, students staying with us can be proud of that their energy consumption is completely climate neutral. So zero, zero carbon footprints and a lot of good karma. <laughs> With that. And our service personnel in uh, Tromsø uses electric cars to get from A to B. And the charging station only charges with renewable energy. Soon we will be able to offer our residents at uh, Prestvane Studentbolje, one of our uh, student uh, houses in Tromsø, their own charging station for electric cars. And uh, within a year, more students' houses will follow. Some ship now runs more than 21 uh, places to eat and drink at the university. And we offer students and staff uh, at, yeah, a wide uh, selection of food and drink. In order to uh, encourage students to choose meatless options, we always have a vegetarian or and or a vegan uh, alternative on our menus, and we always strive to choose locally produced food. 
Um, we have also signed an agreement with Vardimat, uh, um, which allows the cafes to order good quality food that would otherwise be thrown away due to the wrong look or size. Our cafes also focus on reducing food waste by planning ahead. They uh, focus on reducing the use of disposable coffee cups, plates and cutlery, and replace all plastic packaging of food. Today, one of our coffee shops at campus is nearly plastic free. The only thing remaining now is to uh, change the, the plastic straws that you drink from. And uh, we, have found, uh, we have found it and it's on its way, so we're just counting the days. <laughs> Um, our cafes and coffee shops sell a lot of coffee each and every day. Uh, we searched the numbers and found that during 2016 we sold over half a million coffees in disposable cups. Um, our disposable cups is of course made of renewable um, materials, but a necessary use of disposable cups is a waste problem, so here we are. We started a campaign selling the milieu cup and a thermocup that keeps the coffee warm throughout the lecture and can be used again and again. To, uh, to make the students use the milieu cup, we reduced the price of coffee if they used their own thermocup or our milieu cup. And um, this campaign, after long launching this campaign, just within three weeks, we have um, uh, gone up to 43% uh, of the total sale, just also using uh, the milieu cup. This means up to 8,000 paper cups saved in just three weeks. Um, we were very excited about that, that our campaign paid off, but the students love getting a more sustainable way to consume their coffee. So it was a win-win. Now, a year after, the percentage of coffee sold in these cups or um, the students' own cups um, lies about 40%. So, and that um, means that we have saved the environment for about 45,000 paper cups in one year. And we are currently working on making this number even higher. But we can do better. We have successfully changed the number on paper cups for the better. But disposable plates and cutlery are still the preferred choice for our customers. According to our numbers, uh, over 80% choose plastic cutlery and disposable plates over porcelain. And this is okay if you want to take the food or your lunch or dinner to go. But if you're planning to sit down and eat at our, one of our cafes, disposable isn't necessary. So by informing the students about our numbers and the upside of making green choices, we hope to create awareness that will lead to change behavior. And last but not least, I would like to show you our newest giveaway. This is a bag that we give to the students and our um, some of us collaborators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our milieu posa. This bag is meant to replace the use of plastic bags, and uh, both within our organization and outside. For instance, our cafes, cafes use them um, when delivering catering and our kindergartens uh, hands them out to keep dirty or wet clothes in the wardrobe. Right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thanks for your uh, expert opinion and now we would like to uh, give the floor to the representative to the head actually, of the Students' Association of Echo University, who is Maria Navitasari. Maria? She's just about to come. Welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you to the other uh, speaker who's echo to the left, I think, in the bottom. Just click. Yeah, you can tap on it. You, you can click on it so you can see the PowerPoint, another PowerPoint to the left. Uh, and you are mute. <laughs> so. 
Uh, there is no presentation down here. Yeah, but can you log out of the presentation you're watching now? So oh, it's okay. Give me one second. I'm very new to this, so <laughs> yeah, and show and show. Need to tap. Yeah. Yeah. Right now we'll see you. Perfect. So to Sorry. the left. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. 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 Thank you for having us here. Like uh, my name Maria. I'm the chairman of Sudan Union Eco University. Next, please. So our uh, our vision is to introduce the community of the university to ecological a uh, way of living, and we also introduce a separate collection of soil uh, solid waste on the campus, and also to dormitory in our hangars. Next, please. So what is our direction? We have three working group: uh, waste, climate, and environmental education. Next. So right now, our university, Northern Arctic Federal University, we are right now in the list of Green University of Russia. And not long time ago, we won the, uh, the third position of like the greatest university in Russia. Next. So we do also like eco education in the school in Arhangels. Next. And also eco action, uh, uh, like we tell the people how they can separate their their ways and how to live like eco friendly. Next, and like not long time ago, our activists there is like Maxim and Slava. They went to Sochi in order to participate in World uh, Festival of Youth and Students, and they meet also a lot of people who also care uh, in environmental, and they they were in the environmental section in this festival. Next. And we also uh, like several times organized the event in food waste. Uh, not long time ago in October uh, last year, we organized the food sharing event. Next. It's called food sharing cast. So people can bring their food and they can share uh, while they are listening to live music. Next. And we also uh, several times organized like uh, demonstration against climate change. So we want to say like, what is a climate change? Why we need to care in climate change? So, and like last year in the first time in our hangers, we uh, organized the climate uh, climate conference like model COP23 that is held in Bonn, but we made it in our hangers. Okay, next. And right now we are running the projects like Monday No Meat in order to rising the uh, careless of eco footprints. Right now, every Monday, our activists they are not eating meat. Next, and not long time ago, we won also the amazing race from uh, Green uh, Association of Russia, and we we got like straight uh, third position in this competition. It's Water of Russia. And we organize also recycle waste uh, in some events. It's uh, the, this event is like one of the biggest forum in our university. It's called uh, Bella Morsky uh, Student Forum, and we organize the waste uh, recycle there. Next, thank you very much. It's the picture of our activists. Uh, we always have meeting every two weeks. So next week we will have events. So if anybody. For you who who watching us in the in your house or in your dormitory, just come to our events and our meeting next week. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Maria. And I think we now move into one of our closest colleague in this field, in the field of uh, students uh, activism in the field of ecology, who is Ingrid. Yeah. Yeah. With, with a short presentation of our activities of Spire, in University of Tromsø. Can you see the slides? Hmm? Yes, you, yes, you can see the slides. 
Okay, so now we'll just talk briefly about we, what we in Spirit is doing. Um, some of you know what we're doing already, but I will just show, show you some of the things we've done the past year by showing some pictures. And yeah, so what we are, who we are and what we are doing. And for those of you who don't know, it's like approximately there. Yeah. So we have um, social events with a twist where we meet up uh, at local bars mainly, uh, where we talk about plastic waste, climate, other things that we are interested in, uh, and have fun, share opinions, and yeah, make sure that we're just like socially and having fun together. We're also having dinners together, fermenting courses, and it's it sometimes get a bit messy, but it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and we learn a lot. Um, we are beach cleaning uh, at the Strandredagen, which is a national beach cleaning day. This year it's the 5th of May, which we are looking forward to, and hopefully the uh, snow will also be <laughs> not as much as now. That will help us a bit. And we've also been contributing to um, a research project such as, such as OSPAR, which is um, uh, more like um, European collaboration of uh, marine uh, pollution. We have also been on trips. This one was to Gosa, which is a tiny island outside of Tromsø, which was very, very nice. Uh, we had um, discussions about circular economy and um, how to solve our future problems. Uh, it was in the collaboration with other organizations and we also cleaned the beaches there and had a lot of fun together. And there was all people of all ages, both young kids, uh, families and elder people. So it was a lot of fun. One of our um, recent um, main topics has been the zero waste, uh, where we have been doing challenges on social media and uh, competitions. And the goal of this is not, not necessarily to say that everyone has to live zero waste, but it's to um, sort of encourage people to be more aware of the amount of um, waste they produce. And also, yeah, just that there's a lot you can reduce yourself just by taking easy measures. And it's also a lot of fun to share opinions and share ideas. This is also some of the things we've done a lot. We've had swap nights, um, a bit like the, um, I guess it's a bit similar to the book and uh, swap things that I guess Greenpeace was talking about. But we are meeting up in uh, Sefka, which is a cafe or a bar in town, and we, um, encourage people to come with clothes or books or other things uh, and they can give it to us if they don't want it anymore and in return they can take something that someone else has left so it's um, a very nice thing to do if you maybe like your jeans are maybe perfectly fine already but you kind of want to have a dress <laughs> and the next one is 16th of april if anyone wants to join us we have also been growing vegetables at which is a very nice activity and it's also teaching us quite a lot about how to produce food and it's socially fun and we get to meet a lot of people who are not necessarily students as well it's families it's um people who are working and it's it's a lot of fun and uh, very uh, very informative And this is just a couple of the things we're doing. And we have also been having an environmental demonstration against the oil drill in the Bering Station, Bering Sea. We've been standing on stands to promote um, uh, <laughs> promote the plastic in the ocean, but not promote it, <laughs> to <laughs> reduce it, <laughs> um, which was a lot of fun. And uh, now we're launching a campaign, which is called uh, Kinecom is a climate cat um, <laughs> um okay how do how do we say this in english Cl um action, action against climate is action no. for women yeah it's a bit like equality and uh climate uh together and seeing how those two things are interlinked and it's a very very interesting topic and we will have some seminars about this uh throughout the spring so we hope that will be a lot of fun 
we have also been <laughs> we've also been having some uh, other events which is a lot of fun and thank you for your time and if anyone wants to know anything more speak to us afterwards send us an email or on facebook and anything we're just happy to see that everyone else is engaged with us. <laughs> um. Thank you, thank you, our students and environmental colleagues. And I think now we uh, switch into the next speaker, who is uh, Anastasia Sejanova, representatives of uh, Norwegian Baron Secretariat in Archangels. Uh, thank you, Maxim. And I would like, first of all, to thank the organizers of the webinar and the speakers, uh, the organizers, for inviting me for this very interesting arrangement, and the speakers for inspiring and really important speeches. Uh, what we are talking today about um, is environmental pollution and waste management and these problems they do not really have borders i mean geographical borders they are relevant for all the countries for all the people for both russia and norway i speak about russia and norway because i represent the norwegian body secretariat which supports norwegian russian projects um next please this is the um, no, uh, this is the Barents region. Just to remind you about where it is located. Next, please. Next. Uh, the headquarters of the Norwegian Barents Secretariat is located in Cherkines, uh, Finnmar County, uh, northern Norway. But we also have offices in Russia. Three offices in Murmansk, Arkhangelsk, and Narianmar. We have. Two people in Murmansk, one person in Narianmar, and uh, three people in Arkhangelsk. That is me, my colleague Yulia Ardanova, and our boss Andrei Shalov, who is also uh, known to some of you, I, I think, as the honorary consul of Norway to Arkhangelsk. Next, please. The Norwegian Barin Secretariat uh, every year allocates around 80 million Norwegian kroners for uh, bilateral projects. And uh, the numbers of uh, the projects is about three, four hundred, three, four hundred every year. Um, and these projects involve more than 40,000 participants from the Barents region. Next, please. Um, behind all the project ideas, there are people, uh, living people, um, individual people. And the main goal uh, for supporting the projects is to promote and to facilitate people-to-people -people cooperation. That is what we are doing. Um, anyone can be a project participant, uh, whether it is an individual person or a company, a business unit, a municipality, an association, an NGO. Uh, that does not depend on the legal status of the um, applicant, of the project participant. Next, please. Here is the list of um, priority sectors that we support. Um, among them, there are medical care, culture, youth, uh, indigenous people, business, sport, education, environment, uh, civil society, and mass media, to enumerate just uh, some of them. Next, please. Here are the priorities, um, statistics from 2016, but it did not actually change a little if we look at 2017. Uh, he, these are, here you can see the distribution of projects. Most of them are from the cultural sector, then comes education, and then business, youth, uh, indigenous people, sports, uh, mass media and civil society, and environment takes the last position if we cannot see but it's 0.8 percent out of total number of projects that we support of course that uh, shows us there is um, a lot that can be done within environmental sector and that actually opens a lot of opportunities for you next please Uh, if we take the Arhangelsk region, we have annually around 60, 70 projects every year. I mean, the projects where Arhangelsk region is involved. And the main sectors are culture, sports, medicine, uh, I mean, uh, healthcare, mm -hmm. education, environment, and indigenous peoples, uh, which is mostly implemented in the Nenets autonomous area. Next, please. 
There are certain formal criteria that a project idea has to meet uh, if uh, you want to get support, financial support from the Norwegian Body Secretariat. I will enumerate the most important ones. The project participants should be from Norway and Russia. There should be a Norwegian and a Russian partner, at least. Uh, the application is always made by the Norwegian partner. The Norwegian part partner is the applicant and he gets the grant money if the project is supported. The project has to be implemented on the territory of the Barents region. Next, please. Uh, the Barents Secretariat never finances 100% of the budget, of the project budget. The maximum uh, possible financing is 70% and 30% should be in the form of contribution from the applicants. And this co-financing does not necessarily uh, have to be in the form of physical money. Next, please. What do you have to do if you want to get uh, financial support? First of all, you develop a project idea, then you find, uh, you search for a partner, if you are in Russia, you are looking for a partner in Norway and vice versa. Then you discuss the project idea, you develop project description and you develop um, and you develop project budget. You make calculations, necessary calculations. Then you apply for project financing. And if it is supported, you actually implement the project. Afterwards, you have to report on the project and on the money that you have used. Uh, we, our offices in Russia, we provide any possible assistance and uh, uh, advice and uh, provide all the information that you need on all the stages of the project implementation, beginning from the project idea up to reporting. So if you have questions, you are always welcome to, to ask. Yes, next, please. What... What um, you can get money for, for traveling, for accommodation and uh, meals, for interpretation, project administration, rent of venues and uh, equipment which is needed for project implementation. Next, please. What cannot be uh, supported, that is creation of web pages, filming, um, printing of information materials, charity and humanitarian aid, research, establishment of a legal company in Russia or in Norway, and uh, you, cannot, you cannot get money for some expenses that you have already had. Next, please. Um, the the budget can um, can uh, has no limitations actually but if your budget is below 40000 norwegian krona you can uh, apply anytime and every 4 or 6 weeks we have a project meeting in kirkines where all the applications are considered and decision is made if your budget is more than 40 uh, for 100,000 Norwegian kroner, then you have two deadlines on the 1st of October and the 1st of March. And these applications are considered by the board of the Norwegian Baron Secretariat. Next, please. Uh, you need to apply on our application portal and you can get 75% advance payment if the project is approved. The 25th percent uh, can be get, you can get the rest money after you report on the project. Next, please. <clears throat> I just want to say a few words about the environmental projects, which is relevant for today's meeting. Uh, in 2017, I've, I've brought some statistics for you. In 2017, we have supported 12 in, uh, projects within uh, this sector environment. In total volume of financing was more than 3 million Norwegian kroner. These were very different projects with different budgets from 32,000 up to nearly million um, Norwegian kroner. And the applicants were mostly from Troms, from Troms County. There were nine of them and two from Finnmark, one from Nurland. And um, in some of these 12 projects, uh, Arhangelsk region was also involved. Next, please. Here you can see some of the uh, project ideas for environmental projects, but of course, uh, this is uh, not, this list cannot be limited. Uh, you are welcome to initiate new ideas and we shall do our best 
to help you with implementation. We hope to be useful and um, helpful in this uh, very important process. And the next two slides uh, give our um, contact info. You can follow us on Facebook and uh, contact you. We have an official web page, barins.org. And the next uh, web page is actually our contact information in Arhangelsk. You are welcome to come to our office and ask any questions you have re uh, related to financing of Russian Norwegian projects. Thank you. I tried to be as short as possible. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, uh, Anastasia. And uh, just before we get to the conclusions, I would like to tell you that uh, we are just about probably to have a fire drills within the university campus. So uh, probably during the discussion we might be out. Uh, but if we are out, I think we then uh, going to go on our discussion uh, with uh, offline. I mean, after all. Um, I would like to uh, take a look at the resolution of the webinar. And if uh, anybody of you has any um, uh, edits or would like to change it somehow, or delete a part of it or add something to it, uh, you're welcome to express your opinions on that. Ingrid? Uh, what do you, should we just show it? Uh, or should we, should we discuss yeah. it here ourselves? Well, well we, are, we are going to show it in, in case you have any changes to it, any edits to it. Uh, you're welcome to express your opinions on that. But okay. if, if it's so cool, we, yes. we're just going to keep it uh, the way it is. Yes, we can go through it and. Uh, we can also have a little discussion afterwards, so yeah. everyone can be able to read through, and then we'll get back to you with the changes after we've all read through it properly. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, uh, can we also ask you to translate the PowerPoint presentation to English, so you can send them all to us and we can be able to read them? Yes, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so coming to actually the proposals of the webinar, there are three main points which, that, which we would like to stress out. It's the recommendation for our students uh, association to um, continue our close cooperation uh, and to, for the goals of uh, increasing the public awareness within the field of um, separate collection of waste in Akhangelsk and in Trumsa. And uh, moreover, to implement uh, some of our joint projects in the field of sustainable development especially in the Barents region, as we have learned from the previous speaker, we do have uh, some grant support for this field uh, from the Norwegian Barents Secretariat, as well as other organizations and probably universities. So I hope you do support this idea. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So uh, the next two points are actually the proposal to the administrations of our universities for making uh, some kind of uh, youth environmental council where we could discuss uh, the uh, best sustainable practices uh, within the university campus and uh, probably for strengthening of the cooperation between the universities, especially within the year of uh, 25th anniversary of our cooperation. And yes. moreover to that, uh, the vice rector of, uh, of Northern Arctic Federal Universities uh, um, proposed the idea of adding some points on not only creation of the uh, Council of Youth Environmental uh, Organizations, but also uh, probably increasing the number of uh, researches, of joint researches between uh, researchers in Trumso and Arkhangelsk in the field of uh, environment, in the field of ecology, and especially in the field of recycling, sorting out uh, wastes. Yes, this will be sent to uh, our representatives because they had to go early, so they're no longer here. Yeah, but yeah to send it to them and get their opinion on it. Yes, wonderful. After after all, uh, I'm going to add make some uh, additions to the resolution. I will send it to you. Yes, perfect. Wonderful. And the last uh, proposal is uh, the offer for the uh, municipalities of both cities to make a sort of a joint group for exchange of practice. And I think we're going to just send this uh, idea to them uh, after the webinar and uh, have their feedback as an exchange. Yes. That sounds good. Yeah, wonderful. So, uh, do you have uh, any questions for the resolution now? No. 
Wonderful. So I think we could discuss it uh, later if, yes, the, if there's a question. Um, so it was wonderful to have all of you during this webinar. Uh, thanks for organizing it. It was a little difficult, but this is the first time. So now we'll have more practice uh, with uh, doing such kind of things. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>